And that jumps us over here to Fairview Park, where we have another benefit for the city of Costa Mesa, and that is the vernal pools that you see behind me. And here to tell us about this incredible facility over here is Robert Staples. Now, Robert, tell me what your title is. Uh, the Fairview Park Plan Administrator for the, the city. The Master Plan Administrator for the Fairview Park, right? Correct. We've had a master plan for uh, the development and restoration of the park for about the last 14 years. And one of those things that has to excite you with the recent rains is the revitalization of this thing behind us here. Tell us a little bit about this, vernal pools, right? Right, it's vernal pools. Uh, there's a total of about four acres of vernal pools in the park. This is uh, the largest, uh, vernal pool one and two, which were restored back in 1996. It's about 2.1 acres. Um, vernal pools, vernal meaning or uh, relating to spring. Right. Uh, once you get the rains, uh, this hard pan, which uh, um, will fill up, the water will fill up because uh, the groundwater is already saturated, and the vernal pool will uh, establish itself. Along with that is the ecosystem and the habitat. Right. Um, vernal barley, woolly marbles, uh, flowers such as, a, it's uh, called small flowered microceras right. will, will appear. So basically what, why this has all this water is underneath there's like clay or something hard that doesn't allow the water to percolate through, and so the water maintains itself as opposed to other areas around here. Correct. Uh, like this year, if we get enough rain, the vernal pool will create itself. This is the largest it's been since 2006. 2006, uh, we had fairy shrimp, San Diego fairy shrimp, right. and uh, this year we should have them also in the ver yeah. vernal pool. And the significance of this is that in California, there's not many of these left, and to have a find like this, this is great, right? Correct. About 95% of the vernal pools and wetlands in California have been uh, destroyed. Um, the vernal pools come, come under the auspices of the uh, U.S. Fish and uh, Wildlife Service and the California Department of Fish and Game, so they are protected. And the, the San Diego fairy shrimp, which uh, usually only occurs in San Diego, but they discovered ours in 94-95, um, are a protected species, endangered species. And there's other plant faunas and things that have also been discovered here because of the unique ecosystem that we have, right? Right. Uh, they and in Orange they, County, too. This is the largest uh, collection of vernal pools in Orange County between right. San Diego and uh, Riverside County. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, the vernal barley, the mud nama, um, uh, the woolly marbles, those all designated as a vernal pool ecosystem. And what's kind of cool or unique about those is that it's, it's a unique situation, their cycle. They have to go dormant or something when there's no water and there's no rain, right? Right. The, uh, the San Diego fairy shrimp eggs are actually in the mud year-round. Right. Um, they'll only uh, hatch and they'll mate during the, uh, the season when the vernal pool is full, yeah. during the spring. Um, like I said, they'll mate. Uh, some of the eggs will go down in the mud. If they don't hatch that year, if it's you know, a short season, short right. season um, they'll last the, uh, for the next season or they have actually hatched these eggs in the lab after 15 years. So they, they, they're in the mud whether it's dry or wet. Great. And now we've put up a platform here. The city, this is part of the master plan. So we do tours. We give people ideas on what's going on here, right? Right. We'll probably have another uh, tour this spring. Uh, this is uh, the Upper Mesa is what we call Area D. And this is part of that project we just completed uh, four or five months back. Uh, we put up the observation deck, um, put some uh, airline cable fencing around the vernal pool to protect it, uh, an interpretive signage program to uh, ed educate the pu public about what this is. Right. Um, some people wonder why it's not full year-round. They wonder why the city doesn't fill up with water. Yeah. Well, that would uh, uh, negate yeah. it being a vernal yeah, yeah. pool. But, uh, yeah, so they can observe, so they can uh, relax, come up here and look at the vernal pool while it's full uh, during the spring. Right. Now, can we walk off this a little bit? I know we're not really supposed to, oh, no, no, you can't. right, yeah. to walk down and just kind of get a little look at the water and the, the closer to the, the pools down here. Um, I mean, this is, this is really great. What a wonderful thing that we have, you know, in this city here. And yeah, it's quite unique. It, 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 are school kids and people like that going to come out and utilize it for education aspects? Yes, they do. Um, the Waldorf School, uh, they do tours all the time. Um, Estancia High School, I think they bring some of the kids out on a seasonal basis, especially this year when it's full. Uh, it's a great educational experience. Like I said, it doesn't, exp it doesn't, uh, doesn't occur in any other place but uh, Costa Mesa in Orange County right now. Right. And you said there are actually seven of these. This is the largest one we're at right here right now, though. And the other ones, uh, they don't all have the exact same fauna, though, and stuff. Some of them, right? Um, th there's a vernal marsh, which, uh, excuse me, there's a, a vernal marsh in the park, which doesn't have the, the same uh, flora right. and fauna. It doesn't, have the, it doesn't contain, have the uh, flora to, um, to help the uh, yeah. fairy shrimp exist. But, yeah, there's seven vernal pools, one vernal marsh, about four acres total, like I said. And now we're still in a process because for years this has really been a dumping ground of trying to restore these, right? That's going to be an ongoing thing. Correct. It's ongoing. Uh, we, we're constantly searching for grants and uh, mitigation funding uh, to uh, restore the vernal pools, uh, to fence in the, uh, 
the remaining vernal pools. This is uh, the largest one, uh, 2.1 acres, which we fenced in. But in the future, we'll fence the other ones in and put up some more interpretive signage. And that's going to require taking out the fill, landfill stuff that's been here. And as you guys, I think, have said in some of the articles and things I've re read, there's cement, there's metal we're still finding and getting all that out of here to really get this back to what it was years and years ago. Right. Before it was a park, it, it unfortunately was a, a dump site and some of the fill wasn't clean enough. So what they do is go in and clean out all the non-native soil, uh, collect inoculum from the existing vernal pools, inoculate that area, uh, protect it for a few seasons and uh, um, let the, uh, the ecosystem uh, take over. And then when it fills up, the uh, fairy shrimp will, will come back that spring. Okay, and that when you say the inoculum, that is going to like help. It, it's, is that kind of like a vaccine type of thing to, to keep it right. clean? How is it? It'll help the species that is already there of, uh, uh, of the flowers and the, the vernal barley and the mud nama. Will, uh, it'll, it will help it uh, to create itself, to, to, right. to uh, recreate the vernal pool that was already there in the past. Okay, and the fencing. So we're going to, once we restore and get it all going, we really want to make sure we protect this, right, from elements and... and because it is recognized by the Army Corps, in order to do things, we have to get special permission and stuff, too, right? Correct. We have to get permits from the Army Corps and from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So we're charged with protecting these vernal pools now that they've been discovered. But what a wonderful thing. I mean, just kids on their bikes can come out here and oh, take a look. It, yeah. And I know I come here on the weekend with my dog yeah. and get a look at it. And, the weekend. It, and it's nice now to come by here when there's water in it. It's perfect. Like I said, it, it, last time it was this deep was 2006. So it only happens every three or four years. And we haven't seen any of the shrimp yet, the San Diego fairy shrimp, but could they still make their appearance or something? Or just oh, sure. Out they say they, they'll hatch after 30 hours uh, once the vernal pool is full. Right. So I'm sure they're in there. If we had some boots or a biologist with us, we might be able to collect some. It's amazing. We were talking on the way up here how it's kind of like the Serengeti. When the water hits, it just everything comes to life at once. It exactly. Yeah, water. the 17-year cicada. <laughs> they do the same thing. Go dormant and then come when, uh, when the ecosystem is ripe. Yeah, exactly. Um, is there anything else that we have missed about any of the pools, the one marsh we have, or the anything, the process? No, I think you've covered it. Um, you know, if you want to go visit the other vernal uh, pools, they're in the corner over there by Stancha High School and, and the football field. Those are full this year, as well as the vernal marsh. They've actually uh, flooded over the parking a little bit, but yeah. that's that's what they do during the spring. Now, will those also be protected, fenced in, and also so we keep them? Or are those because this is the main one we're going to try and keep people out of here? No, all of them are on the master plan to be protected, be so protected. fenced in and signed, correct. Okay. Those over there are signed. They're just not fenced right now. And, and the water has to be natural, right? We're not going to be, like, I know down at the lakes down there, we'll be pumping water in. We're not going to do that here. It's going to be the natural water rain. Is that Correct. That's a created wetlands right there. This is vernal pool. It happens naturally. It only happens in this spot because of this ecosystem, so we'll let nature take its course. All right. And, and again, I can't reiterate how awesome this is because of the development along the coast from San Diego up. We're losing a lot of these, and to have this here is just its amazing. It's, it's great. 95% are gone, and we've got uh, the greater percentage of any city in uh, Orange County. Exactly. All right, Robert. Well, I want to say thank you very much Thanks, for Brad. giving us this info on the Vernal Pools. This incredible thing the city has, a benefit we have. It's great. Going. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, and I want to thank the guys over at T3 Motion also and to let you know to email us at the address you see below if you guys have anything you want to see on our future shows. And until then, remember that we are discovering Costa Mesa.